<coughs> Disclaimer. The information provided to you in this video course is for educational work only. It teaches you how to work with Linux and some security tools from the information technology. The author is not responsible for the way you use this information. The information provided to you has an educational objective to impart knowledge to everybody who is interested in Linux. Persons who want to use the shown knowledge to harm other people are unwanted and it is forbidden to them to watch this video course. At first I want to give you a short overview about this course. We start with the basics of Linux and then we will learn how to use files and directories. After we are able to handle the Linux basic commands it is time to go deeper into the system and network areas of Linux. Then you will learn how to use the shell and shell scripts. After that we will take a look at the toolkits of Backtrack 5 and also on the configuration files of the Linux system. Last of all we will take a look at demons and how they work. I hope you will enjoy this video course and learn something useful. Ok, you watched the first two parts of this video course, or you know already the basic Linux commands and want to start here, in this part of the course which handles system and network topics, I made part 1 and part 2 of this course, short and easy to understand, but in this part, which handles system and network topics you will maybe see some new commands that you don't know. If you saw part 1 and 2 of this video course, you already know now how to use the help system of the Linux system. I will try my best to explain you every new command as good as possible. Also I want to forewarn you that this part of the course will take longer than part 1 and 2. I promise you new commands, and here they are. If you work on a Linux system you maybe want to get some system informations about your machine. Let's start a terminal window, and then type in date, this shows you the current date, that means the day, the month, the time and the year, cool stuff but take a look at the next command, type in cal, and you see a whole calendar which shows you the current month, these two commands also have some options just type e g space minus minus help to see them. Always remember that nearly every command has options and arguments. But now let's go to the next command, type in the terminal window optim, and you get the optim of your Linux machine, that means how long your Linux machine is running since you boot your system. The next command is very useful if you work on a Linux machine that is used by many other users, e.g. 5 or more users, type in your terminal W and hit enter. Then you see all running sessions, and the user to whom they belong. The reason that you see now two sessions is, that the one session is the genome desktop, and the other the terminal window I have running at the moment. If you are in Linux administrator and change often your user accounts, for example you have the usernames tux, new and you use also the root account, then you switch between them and at some point you can't remember who you are. For this cases you can use the who ami command, type in the shell who ami, and hit enter. Now Linux returns your username. In my case I get the information that I am root. The next command is the finger command. If you type finger space, username, you get all information of an user. I am sorry to say, that this is not installed in the basic configuration of Backtrack 5. You will find the finger command mostly on networks or on server systems, if you have a Linux environment with more than 500 users then you will know to appreciate this command. The next command I show you now is the unum command, type in your shell unum space minus a, and you get one line with details to your Linux machine. Do you want now more informations? No problem. Here they are, type in cat space slash proc slash to get information about your CPU, wow that was fast, 
too fast to read it all. I need to use now a pipe. What is a pipe? What? You don't know this? No problem I show you two examples now. You will need some key combinations on your keyboard. Type in your shell the same command you typed in a short while ago. So type cat space slash proc slash info space and now press the out GR key on the right next to the space bar key and hold it pressed. You see on the left side the key with the greater than and smaller than symbols, there is also a vertical line on the key now press that key too. On your screen now there should appear the pipe symbol. Ok, very good. Now you add to your command space and then less with double S, this looks then like this cat space slash proc slash info space pipe space less, good and now hit enter key. To see now the next page hit the space bar key, as long as it is necessary, to get to the end of the document. This is a pipe command. Press now a few times the up arrow to go line by line up, and now back, press the down arrow, down, 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 and now try this with the page up and page down key, one page up, one page up, one page down, one page down and so on. Now just type the letter Q, and quit. The same thing that you did now with the less command, works also with the more command. I prefer the less command, but you can use more for your pipe commands. Feel free to try what you think is the best for you, less or more. Ok now let's proceed to the next commands, that what you saw with your CPU, works also with your RAM, type in your shell cat, space, slash, proc, slash, meminfo, and hit enter. This shows you all kind of information, applying to your memory. Here you can use also the pipe command with less, that I showed you a few minutes ago. Now let's proceed to the next command which is called disk usage, tip in your terminal df, followed by the option minus h, that stands for human readable, this command shows you the disk usage. There is another command, which shows you the directory space usage, to execute that command type in du, followed by, space, minus h, for human readable. After you hit enter you will see all the space that every directory use. With minus minus help option, you are able to see more of the options this both commands offer. The next command is the free command, it shows you the free RAM size of your system, type free minus M, for megabytes, or type free minus K, to see the output in kilobytes, and so on, use the help command for more informations. Let's see the next command, it is called where is the where is command tells you the locations of an program, let's see an example, type in where is ls, and hit enter, then you get the output of the location where the list command is located. There exists also the which command. It is similar to the where is command, and the which command shows you program will be run by default and where it is located. Type for example, which pwd and hit enter or try which ls, and so on. There are many options to use this command. Crazy stuff, until now you saw many commands, and you will see much more, I promise, you will learn a lot of new commands. Time for a short break, let's take a look at some shortcuts that you can use with your keyboard. If you press the key combination, Ctrl plus C, you will hold the current command. If you press Ctrl plus D you lock out from the current session, this is like the exit command, which also lock you out from the current session. With Ctrl plus W you can erase one word in the current line, 
You need this if you have a long word, and you do not want to delete it with your backspace key. The other key combination that works similar to that is Control plus U. With Control plus U, it is possible to erase the whole line. One of my favorite commands is the double exclamation mark. If you type exclamation mark, exclamation mark, then you repeat the last command you type in. Many know this function if they press the up key on the cursor block. The double exclamation mark is another possibility to do this. You can use this for example in shell scripts, but this is part of another video. Later in this course. Okay, now I teach you something very important. I teach you how to search some things under Linux. You will learn how to search in the file, for example in the text file, you will learn how to search after a pattern in the directory, and you will learn how to search for pattern in the output of the command, last but not least you will learn how to locate all instances of the file. So let's go. At first we create now a text file with the cat command, therefore we redirect the input, which we type into the cat editor, type cat followed by space, and the input redirection sign, space file.txt now you are into the cat editor, here we write some words, for example hello 123 and hit enter, hello 456 and hit enter, hello 000 and hit enter, to close the cat editor and to save the input we type control plus D, now we type the ls command, to see if the file was created, and to see what is inside the file we type now last paste file.txt and hit enter. Now we create a directory, so type mcd folder, we need the directory for a command that I will show you later. And now we copy the text file into that folder with the copy command. Type cp space file.txt space folder. OK. To see if the file has been copied into that folder you type ls paste folder, do you see the output? If nothing went wrong you should see now the file.txt ok. Ok. Very good. That are all preparations we need to take until now. And after we done this, it is time to search after some pattern. So let's go. To search after patterns in the directory you type grep minus r, then the pattern you want to search, and then the directory name, let's see an example, type grep minus r, hello space folder, and hit enter. Wow! Do you see the output? It shows you the text of the text file you copied into this directory. Great stuff! Now let's try the same thing with the file but first clear the screen with the clear command. Type ls to see the items of the current directory. There is a file.txt. Very good. Now type in grab hello file.txt and hit enter. Now try something else. Type grab hello 456 space file.txt and hit now enter. Do you see the output? It tells you only one result. Now let's search after patterns in the command, to do that, type in ls, pipe, grab, and then the letter f, and hit enter. Do you see the result? It lists you everything in your current directory what begins with the letter f. Very good. That's great stuff. Last but not least we use the locate command, type locate space file.txt. And this should show you all results on your systems that contain the pattern file.txt. OK. That is the way you can search under Linux. It's great. May the source be with you. But the processes are it often not. Many applications are full of bugs, and you are mostly the one who discovers them. Shit happens, and to prevent that such a bug kills your system, you have on every Linux system something called process management. I show you now three important commands, the ps command, the top command, and the kill command. 
Let's begin with the PS command, open the terminal window, and type in PS to see the current processes which are running at this moment. Now open one more application, for example the internet browser Firefox. After Firefox has started, go back to the terminal window and type in the command PS once again, and see what has happened, not very much, but let's try the command with some options, so type now PS minus UX, and while so much information, we just wanted to see the Firefox process, to get only that information that belongs to Firefox we type the command PS minus UX, and pipe it with grab, space Firefox, then we get only the information we need, only the information related to Firefox. OK, let's clear the screen with the clear command. Now type in top, and you see a real-time process viewer, if you press the C key, you will see the path to the processes, type C once, type C twice, and see what happens. Now type Ctrl plus C to stop the top command. Great stuff, but there is something even better than top, it is called H top, so type H top, and hit enter, cool stuff, just enjoy and watch what your system is doing, and you can watch everything in real time, great stuff, now type Ctrl plus C to stop this application. After the video course you can watch this video again or you press pause for a short break and try some commands, but this just by the way, let's get it on with the next command, it is the kill command, we will kill our Firefox browser now, clear the screen on the terminal window with clear, type in ps minus ux pipe grab Firefox. Now you see the process ID of Firefox and type kill, space, process ID, that's all, and after you hit enter Firefox will be killed. OK, now you learned a lot of new commands, you know now how to manage processes, for more information to that topic you can ask the manual pages or use the help command of Linux. The one half of this video is now nearly done, the only thing I still want to show you, before we enter the networking area of Linux, are the compression of files, how to use the tar command, and the gzip command, but let's have a short break here. Ok, the break is over and now, we turn back to our topic. I will show you how to use file compression under Linux. You may be asked yourself, what is compression, and for what do I need that? File compression aims to make files on your file system smaller than they are without file compression, nowadays this does not really matter, but in the past as memory was very expensive, this was a huge matter. I use compression for example, if I want to send somebody an email, and I have many files, more than 10 files, maybe 85 files. In this case I make a zip archive, and send only one single file as attachment. The recipient then only needs to uncompress my archive, and he gets the 85 files, I send him. By the way, what would you prefer? to get an email with 85 files as attachment, and to save them all file by file on your computer, or would you prefer to save a single file on your computer, to click only one time and to uncompress it, and have all 85 files faster on your computer, what would you choose? This is another reason for compression, beneath the smaller size of the file. Ok, now let's see an example on the shell. For that example, we need to create some input files for the compression. To do that we use once again the cat editor, and redirect the output into a text file. Type into the shell the following command. cat slash proc slash cpu info, redirection sign, file1.txt, 
and to prove that it has been created you type in ls minus the option l, do you see the output? The file is there and has a few bytes. To get more files for our compression example I will just copy this created text file. Type cp file 1txt space file 2txt control your action with ls minus option l do you see the file size? Both files are now at the same size. Very good. And now we will compress these files. Under Linux you have three well-known options to compress a file. The one is to do that over tar, and the other two are to do that over the gzip or the bzip command. You also can compress a file with a mixture of all these compression methods, and that is exactly the thing I will show you now. Let's go, clear the screen with the clear command, type in ls, to list all items, you now should see the two text files. Good. In the next step you type in tar, space, minus, cf, space, archive.tar, space, file1.txt, space, file2.txt, this will create a compressed file named archive. The option minus C stands for create, the option minus F stands for force local, that means that the archive file is local even if it has a colon. Ok, now let's type in ls once again, and you should see the tar file archive. To see what is inside this tar file, you type now tar, space, minus tvf, archive dot tar, after you hit enter you see what is inside this compressed file archive. Now we will delete the text file 1 and 2. For doing that we will need the remove command. So type in rm, space, file 1.txt, space, file 2.txt, after you take a short look with ls, you will see that the text file 1 and 2 has disappeared. Good. Now we will extract from the tar archive, to do that you type in tar, space, minus xf, space, archive dot tar. After you hit enter you will see that the text file 1 and 2, which we compressed are now extracted to our current directory. Good, now you know how to use the tar command, for more options take a look at the manual pages. In the next step we use the gzip and bzip command. We have now two text files in our current directory, and use them to create a gzip file and a bzip file. So type into your terminal window, gzip, space, file1.txt, and hit enter. Now type ls, do you see the output? The file which ends with .gz, we have created now. Cool stuff. Now let's do the same with bzip, type in bzip2, space, file2.txt, and hit enter, watch your results with the list command ls, good. Now we know how to compress with gzip and bzip2, but now we will also learn to extract files from this compressed archives. But first let's clear the screen with the clear command, so type clear. Next you type in ls, and you look at the file that ends with gz, type in gzip, space, minus d, space, file1.txt, dot gz, and hit enter. If nothing went wrong, then you should see, after you type ls, that the dot gz file is no longer there but therefore the file1.txt has appeared. Good. The bzip command works exactly the same way. Clear the screen with the clear command. Type in ls to list all items in the current directory. Now type bzip2, space, minus d, space, file2.txt, dot bz2, and hit enter. After that the bzip file should be disappeared and therefore the file2.txt is now visible. If you type in ls, Great stuff, now you know how to compress and decompress files on a Linux system. I teach you the basics of compression, if you like to get more knowledge use the help command and read the manual pages.
Congratulations. You learned now a lot of stuff about the system part. Now we will take a look at the network basics of Linux. Every computer which is connected to a network needs to have an IP address. With an IP address the computer can communicate to other clients in the network. Every IP address exists only one time in the network. If you configure two clients with the same IP address, you will realize very soon that you have a problem. The condition for the next part of this video is that you already know some basic things about networks. For example what is an IP address, what is a subnet, what is a local area network, and much more. I will not explain to you every single detail that relates to a network topic, because we do not have the time for such things. If you want to learn more about networks, buy a book or search for it in the internet. This video course tells you how to use Linux commands and will not teach you how a network really work because of the name reasons, the time factor. Let's begin with the simple command, the host name command. This command tells you what the name of your machine is. Type in host name, and hit enter, like nearly every other command in Linux, the host name command has options that you can use. Type for example host name minus lowercase i and you will see the IP address of local host. If you do the same but with uppercase i and type host name minus i, then you will see your current IP address that you received from your router or which you allocate to your network card. The next command is if config. If config shows you details about your connection. With the command if config you could configure your network card. If you want more details read the manual pages, just type man if config, and hit enter. The option minus a shows you all your interfaces, the option minus s, shows you a short list, like another network command, netstat minus i. Let's go and clear the screen with the clear command, and now type in if config, do you see the output? Ok, now let's type clear again. And now the command if config s, do you see this new output? Now you look at that, and do not understand it. I told you that the condition of this part of the video, is that you know some network basics. You will need such a command like this, if you need to analyze and troubleshoot something that has to do with the network. But now let's go to another command, that you read a few lines ago. It is the command net status, the command nets that inform you about connection and services on the network. There are many options for this command but I show you now the two most common netstat commands. The first one is netstat minus tupl. This command lists internet services on the system. Do you see the output? Good. Let's clear the screen for the next command with clear. The next command is netstat minus tup. This command lists up all active connection to and from the system. These are advanced commands, but I forget to tell you the most common command. The command ping. The ping command tells you if a network client is reachable or not. Let's see an example. Clear the screen with clear. Type in ping and then the IP address you want to ping. After that hit enter. If you get an answer from the IP address you ping, the client seems to be up. If you get the message that the host or client is unreachable, then the server or client you try to ping is down or the firewall system on the remote client blocks this request. In huge networks, you sometimes do not want that somebody knows if a host is up or down, because it is relevant to the security of this host. In this cases you could block ping requests. Last of all, a few more commands you should know. I will give you no examples to this command, because the best way to learn something, is, to do it yourself. I am very confident, that you now know how to use the manual pages and the help system of Linux. 
good luck, and I hope that you will watch the next part of this video course. In part 4 we will take a look at the shell, and shell scripting, I say, thanks for watching and I hope you have learned something useful. Love the beat, control you.